Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So a lot of you guys may have seen a post like this recently and may be wondering, how do I apply for internship in St. Lucia? So today, I'm gonna explain that process in this video and I hope you guys learn something from it, okay? So stick along. Hey there, I'm Shemaine. And I'm Rashad. And, and we're, we're the, the Prospects. Seeing that it is the season of graduation from medical school, I know a lot of you guys have questions on where to apply, how to apply, and I'm gonna try to see if I can answer that today. So this video is going to be geared towards people who have left medical school, people who are currently in medical school, and people who are thinking of going into medical school to just have an idea of how it is that they can apply for internship to become a doctor in St. Lucia. So becoming a doctor in St. Lucia is actually broken up into two phases. The first phase is the internship phase. This phase is a one-year process that is divided into the four core rotations, gynecology, general surgery, pediatrics, and internal medicine. Afterwards, you're awarded with your medical license, and it could now be broken down into two categories. There's institutional licensing, which allows you to be a medical house officer in one of the medical institutions in St. Lucia, specifically Tapio, Owen King, European Union Hospital and St. Jude Hospital. And then there's a second part to the licensing, which is the full license, which allows you to work in the health centers, work in the polyclinics, have a private practice. And we're gonna go through all of this in this video today. So the first thing you will need for internship in St. Lucia is a medical degree from an accredited medical school. This can either be a school on island, such as Spartan Health Sciences or AMU, or it can even be abroad. We're talking Trinidad, we're talking Canada, the States, Jamaica, Taiwan, Cuba, and other places. But the caveat is that your degree has to be accredited, recognized by the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Council. For the offshore medical schools, it is important that one, you do your exit exam to get your medical degree. Whether it is that you do your medical school in St. Lucia or outside of St. Lucia, it is important that your medical degree is recognized by the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Council. So, after you have done all your exit exams and you have attained your medical degree, here is where we're going to split up the process into Taiwan and Cuba and the others. So, the others will include schools like Spartan, AMU, Trinidad, Jamaica, other offshore medical schools. For these offshore medical schools, the second thing that is necessary is that you need to have proof of completion of either CAMC, CAMC Part 1, USMLE Part 1 and 2, or PLABS Part 1. This is criteria for starting internship. In the case of Cuba and Taiwan, the last year of the medical school constitutes an internship and it, it allows these students to start their medical internship without necessarily having to have the first page of a board exam. So now you have your medical degree. In the case of non-Cuban, non-Taiwanese students, you also have proof of your CAMC Part 1 or your USMLE Part 1 and 2 or your PLABS Part 1. What else do you need? So here we go, diving into the process. For those of you who are wondering, what is the Sanusha Medical and Dental Council? The Sanusha Medical and Dental Council is a governing body that overlooks the appointment of new medical officers in St. Lucia. It is a subsidiary of the Ministry of Health but also works as an independent body but their job is to verify that all medical school students meet the requirement or meet the standards for practicing medicine in St. Lucia. So you want to apply for internship in St. Lucia, here's what you do. The first thing is you send a letter to the Ministry of Health to either the chief medical officer or the medical officer of the Ministry of Health expressing your intention to do internship in St. Lucia. That's the first thing you do. The second thing is you also send a letter requesting your intent to do internship to the St. Lucia and Medical Dental Council. What will happen is the Medical and Dental Council will tell you, hey, we received your letter. Here's a list of requirements that's necessary for starting internship in St. Lucia. But you also need to have a letter from the Ministry of Health, from either the Chief Medical Officer or the Medical Officer of the Ministry of Health, stating that you have been accepted to do internship under the Ministry of Health in St. Lucia. So you received a response from the Ministry of Health saying that you are good to go, we would like to accept you to do internship. Here's what you need for the Medical and Dental Council. The first thing like I spoke about a while ago is you would need your, your, your application to the Medical and Dental Council. Say, hey, um, 
formally, of course, you say I would like to start my internship in Zenusha. Um, I studied at this medical school. I ended my intern my ended my medical school at this time and this here's a copy of my resume. The Medical and Dental Council also has a few documents that are necessary to be signed and filled out before applying for internship. So apart from the application form from the Medical and Dental Council, you also have to hand in your letter of application which we spoke about a while ago, a provisional offer letter from the Ministry of Health indicating availability of internship positions. So that's what I was talking about a while ago. The Ministry of Health has to say, hey, we'd like to accept you for internship, we'd like to provide you a position for internship after having evaluated that there are spaces available. Next, you will need a verified unauthorized copy of your first basic medical or dental qualification. So, your medical degree needs to be notarized and verified. Proof of completion of CAMC Part 1, USMLE Part 1 and 2, or CLABS Part 1 for those who have done the medical school outside of Cuba and Taiwan. Two original reference letters and at least one must be from a medical supervisor or a lecturer. It's also required an updated copy of your curriculum vitae with accompanying contact information. You'd also need original valid copies of police records of countries that you have resided in over the past six months. So for those who studied in Taiwan and Cuba and anywhere else for that matter, a copy of a police record from that country and also a local police record as well to say that no crimes have been committed overseas and no crimes have been committed since you came back. Then you would also need an original health certificate signed by a medical practitioner with a current practicing certificate, a registered medical practitioner with a current practicing certificate. Pretty much somebody who went through the process, became a medical practitioner and then now they can sign your document, stamp your document to send it back to the council. You would also need an original malpractice disclosure form. This one is also included in the Central Medical and Mental Council. Proof of proficiency in the English language is also required for those that English is not their native language. For those of us who speak English natively, your CXCs and A-levels would constitute the fact that you speak and did English. But it's important to know that if your medical school was done in a country that is not an anglophonic country, it's important that you do provide proof of English language proficiency if you're not from a natively anglophonic country. Notarized copy of your picture ID, a notarized statutory declaration, and then we talk about money. So then the processing fee is $105. You hand that in with all your documents, and then your documents get submitted for the process. Lack of a better word. Upon approval of your certificate by the board, then another $150 is required for the registration fee. So You've now applied to the Medical and Dental Council, received your letter from Ministry of Health. What comes next? Upon speaking with the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Health would indicate which hospital in St. Lucia you would be doing your internship. So at the time of doing this video, there are only two places in St. Lucia that allow you to do your medical internship. One, St. Jude Hospital, and two, Owen King European Union Hospital. So after a few weeks, when your documents do become approved, the Medical and Dental Council will provide you with your practicing certificate, which explains that, hey, you're working on a provisional license, which allows you to do certain things within a certain context, and it also puts what you are not allowed to do during that period of time. That certificate is necessary because when you go to apply to your hospital, your hospital will also require some documents as well, including a copy of that certificate. So in the case of foreigners who are not CARICOM nationals, an additional step is required, and that is the application for a work permit in addition to all the previously mentioned documents. So you've taken everything, now you go to Inland Revenue, you get your tax code, and you are able to now use that tax code to apply for your internship 
and then give it to the hospital so that they could process your pay and put you in a specific tax bracket. And that is pretty much the process of how to start an internship in St. Lucia. So one thing that we have noted is that 53.7% of you guys who watch this channel are not subscribed. So with that, I'd just like to encourage you guys, if the content that we provide is something that you find of value, please, we definitely encourage you guys to subscribe and to follow along for more of the journey. So, upon completing internship, each intern would, have, would be given a document which is an evaluation of all their core rotations. They would have been evaluated by the consultants and the head of departments to assess their capability in all four rotations. A copy of this document will be sent to the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Council because this document is important for applying for a medical license as medical practitioner. So now you've gone back to the medical and dental council after your internship has finished and you present to them pretty much there's some things that we have to go over again. So you have to get your police record again. You present to them the original certificate that was given, the original temporary practicing certificate. Try your best not to lose this during the year of internship because you need it to present it back to the council in order for them to process you as a medical practitioner. There are two ways to go about doing this. You could either apply for an institutional license as a medical practitioner, where you would be obligated to work with a medical institution for two years, or you can apply for a full license, which allows you to work in the communities, to have a private practice, or to work in the health centers. The difference between the two is the completion of your board exams. So to apply for a full license, it's important that you have your CAMC Part 2, PLABS Part 2, or proof of your assembly Part 3 completed. So you've done everything the council has approved you for, either an institutional license or a full license. For a full license, it's a little bit easier. For an institutional license, it is important that a letter from one of the recognized institutions be sent to the council be it Tapio, St. Jude Hospital, or Owen King European Union Hospital. In order to get that letter from the institution, you would need to apply to the institution, expressing your interest to work at the institution as a house officer with your curriculum vitae, your medical degrees, police records, and whatever other requirements that these institutions have set in place. You've now completed the application process. The Nusha Medical and Dental Council has now approved you and you are now ready to start your work as a medical officer in St. Lucia. I hope this video was able to bring some clarity to a lot of questions that you guys may have had. I would also like to highlight the difference between two core institutions in St. Lucia. In St. Lucia, we have the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Council and we also have the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. As mentioned previously, the council is responsible for licensing and verification of ability to practice in St. Lucia. The Medical and Dental Association, however, is pretty much the doctors, the union for the doctors in St. Lucia. This is the body that bargains on behalf of the doctors. They work to establishing fair working conditions for all doctors, irregardless of their status, be it from consultant all the way down to internship. During internship, interns are encouraged to to submit an application to the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. The good thing about it is that if you were to apply for the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association during internship year, as of now, it would cost you $250. And after that year is done, the consecutive year would be $250 as well. However, if you wait until internship is done and then you apply for the first time, it will be $500. And $500 consecutively. So after internship, the first two years would be $250. During internship, the first two years will be 250 and after that, you pay the $500. So, the application part will be done through the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Council, which is the body that has record of every single medical practitioner legally practicing medicine in St. Lucia. So for those who have been thinking, what is my next step after internship and what is, how is it that I get to St. Lucia? I hope that this video was able to provide some clarity in order to help you move the process along. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message on Instagram. You can always shoot me an email. Just check in the bio and the information is there. I hope you guys have a blessed day. And above all else, 
put God first. So for those of you who are new to our channel, this is a channel where we speak about love and relationships, marriage and everything in between. If you don't know where to start, I would like to encourage you to either select one of the above. Feel free guys to explore the content and I hope that you guys are blessed.